beautiful flower of Carmel, most fruitful vine. Welcome to day 7 of Our Lady of Mount Carmel talk series. The topic of today is Exploring the Profound Spiritual Motherhood of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. The Council of Ephesus in the year 431 AD formally stamped the dogma of the Divine Motherhood of Mary. The question at the Council was not whether Mary gave birth to Jesus or not. It was rather a question of what exactly or who exactly did she give birth to. In other words, who is this Jesus that Mary bore? At the end, the Council Fathers formally affirmed that Jesus is truly God and truly man. Thus, Mary becomes the Theotokos, that is, Mother of God, since she is the Mother of Jesus, who is both God and man. Thus, the dogma of the Theotokos becomes the basis for other maternal titles ascribed to the Blessed Virgin Mary. We must know that it is a matter of fact that by virtue of being the Mother of Jesus, Mary is also the mother of all who have been adopted by God through faith in Christ. This means that if we profess that we are brothers and sisters of Jesus by divine adoption, we are invariably confessing our identity as sons and daughters of Mary, who is the mother of Jesus. However, in matters of faith, we do not become what we are merely by default or by constraint. Rather, our identity is fully actualized by acceptance and by choice. In other words, we do not become children of Mary simply by acknowledging Christ as the Lord. Instead, we become her children by accepting who she is to us and choosing to recognize and reverence Mary. In the light of this, in the late 12th century, some pious knights gathered in the caves of Mount Carmel to witness to a life of solitude and poverty in imitation of Christ, and they chose Mary as their model and protector. They recognized the Mother of God as the best mother to follow in imitation of Christ. Consequently, they took the name Brothers of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mount Carmel, placing themselves under the patronage of Mary as their mother and queen. Thus, they became the first religious institute in the Church to name themselves after the Blessed Virgin Mary. These were the progenitors of the Carmelite Order. The Blessed Virgin Mary in turn accepted this motherly role and manifested herself not too long after. In the event of 1251, during the days of St. Simon's Stock, when the Carmelite Order was facing several challenges including danger of collapse, she intervened by appearing to St. Simon and gifting him with the brown scapula. This brown scapula of Our Lady of Mount Carmel was to be a sure sign of her motherly protection and presence to all Carmelite children. Hence, those who belong to the Carmelite family or are affiliated to it through devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel and her brown scapula all partake in the patronage of the Mother and Queen of Carmel. St. John of the Cross recounted three occasions where he was saved by the Blessed Mother from life-threatening situations. In the same way, Our Lady of Mount Carmel accompanies and saves her faithful children from all adversities. She is for us a channel of God's love and mercy, and when we make recourse to her, she hears and answers us. Her maternal care for her scapular children does not end here on earth. She accompanies us to the hour of death, as she did Jesus. Thus, we refer to her as a gentle parent, pure beyond human love. Assured of these benefits, what then is expected from us? We must truly be her children by our way of living, by imitating her virtues as she is presented to us as the perfect embodiment of the ideal of our Carmelite vocation. We must live in imitation of Mary, a life of allegiance to Jesus Christ. 
If we want to claim the blessings that comes from being her children, we must also manifest to the world the identity of her mother, so that those who encounter us may declare like the woman in the Bible, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breast that suckled you. We must understand that the best means of praying, paying homage to Mary is by imitating her virtues. Finally, as in the Council of Ephesus, Mary's honor issued from Jesus, so does our devotion to her issue from our zeal for allegiance to Jesus Christ, choosing her as our mother and our mother. We pray that the blessings of the Lord, which comes through Our Lady, Queen and Mother of Camel, may always abide with us. Thank you.